Thanks everybody for coming today and uh, in the, under the circumstances. Um, it's always good and thanks Peter for the opportunity to present. Um, I just noticed and Dan Locker would like to see that I, I do actually have more than one tyre even though that same picture I think I had the same tyre on so um, Dan might be right I do I, but I do have another tyre at home. Um, it's Actually, I just want to write, read out our title. I, I'd only just read it myself, um, but it's a good one. Um, Revenge of the Miner, The Rise of Nickel and the Battery Revolution. So that's actually a, a quote that I used from uh, a guy called Robert Friedland. And um, we, we're living and breathing this Revenge of the Miner uh, theme. And, and um, we've got a great story here. And, and I think you'll agree um, that we're in the box seat as, as miners um, we actually came to this conference, our first one was three years ago, um, so we've done uh, three, three of these, or uh, this is our third, and the first uh, Battery Minerals Conference, we actually met our, our South Korean agent, a group called Harp Capital, and they said, we want to take you up to South Korea and, and meet the battery end users, and I've done eight trips to Seoul now, and, um, and that um, has been a great experience. We actually started as a cobalt explorer out of British Columbia. And then we met a group called Echo Pro, they're, and nobody's probably ever heard of them, but they're actually the biggest and largest cathode manufacturer in the world. Uh, they're a group out of uh, South Korea. And they said to us, um, you know that cobalt that we're looking at in, in the core, um, can you go and find some nickel? You, we've, we've got the wrong metal. Um, we need to move towards a high nickel cathode. So, um, and I think Alan's uh, slides have shown that. There, there was a focus on cobalt early in the in the battery chemistry, um, it's now moving towards a high nickel and that's why we went and bought a little nickel mine in Vietnam. Um, so today we'll be talking about that, the movement obviously towards high nickel cathodes. We'll talk about our nickel sulphide district. It is a district scale opportunity. And then we're going to add on a downstream nickel refining business which allows us to move towards those um, downstream products. So we're actually going to produce the first stage of the battery which is called the precursor product and we're looking at a mix of um, NCM or nickel, cobalt to manganese of 811. So eight times nickel, one times cobalt, one times manganese, and it might even go further than that. So there's no reason why it wouldn't head to, to even higher nickel contents and, and reducing the cobalt. So you can see there, um, unfortunately that's a benchmark chart, but very similar to Alan's charts there. It's, um, there's a lot of nickel there, so we need about a million tonnes of class one nickel for the battery industry. That's actually the whole world supply today. Uh, again, we need to go and find and um, uncover and, and process and, and turn into chemicals. So it's, um, it's a big um, uh, challenge we have ahead of us as an industry. Uh, we're listed on the Australian Stock Exchange, obviously. Um, well funded, $19 million last um, quarter. Uh, we've got some very supportive shareholders there. We've got Deutsche Balaton out of Germany. They've been They've been with us for over three years as well. They came in for the cobalt and um, agreed that we needed to move into nickel, so they, they keep backing us in. Um, Fidelity came into the last raise, so that's one of the largest institutional investors in the world. They like our ESG credentials, and we'll talk more about that. Um, and then you've got Echo Pro there as well. So Echo Pro's representative, Mr Jung, on the board. So we have a representative from South Korea, Mr Jung. Um, we've just recently added Ms Alison Gaines as a corporate governance expert and and just shows our, I suppose, commitment to ESG compliance. Um, and then we've got three ugly mining executives there as well that know a little bit about mining. Um, I was a mining engineer, then I turned a, into a um, dirty stockbroker. Um, so that's really helpful for accessing capital. Um, you can see here, and we've, this, is, this is the story, the flow of capital into this space is something we've never seen as an industry before. Um, it's coming, and it's coming hard. And, um, so to put that in perspective, LG came out the other day and said they're going to put $10 billion into Indonesia to access nickel for the lithium-ion battery. Um, you can see there, LG's up there with um, Echo Pro. Echo Pro is actually number one. So um, look out because um, we, we're, we're friends with all the Koreans um, and there's a number of them on there. You can see LG, Samsung and POSCO coming in down the bottom but coming from behind and, and looking really exciting as well. 
Um, this is our business. So this is our um, downstream business. We're converting nickel concentrate. Um, we're converting it into the 811. You can buy nickel con for about 70 to 80 percent. Um, there's a number of miners here that I might want to buy some off. Um, and then we're going to convert it into that chemical product over in Vietnam. We've got much lower um, operating costs. It's the, some of the lowest um, power costs in the world and it's a hydro renewable power which, is a, which produces the green nickel product. Uh, that's a VinFast car. So VinFast is a local Vietnamese group looking to build electric vehicles. They're looking to IPO on the NASDAQ uh, with an opening market cap of $50 billion. So uh, look out for VinFast. They are um, Vietnam's a answer to Tesla, basically, and um, they're, they're looking to um, take on some of the major players in the industry. Um, they're going to need a lot of nickel. You can see there the, the labour costs in Vietnam is half of the operating costs of, of China. And... And obviously uh, a lot of um, manufacturing in China, but we're, we're looking at um, half the cost of operating in China. Um, a lot of nickel, uh, so um, there's a lot of nickel out there, there's a lot of dirty nickel out there, um, there's a lot of nickel that's on coal and diesel powered um, mine sites. Um, we're looking at a hydro renewable power, we're looking at a hydro metallurgical process which, which is much better suited to these chemical products. Uh, much lower emissions. Um, so a lot of the, the nickel in the, in the world today is, is set up on stainless steel uh, infrastructure. So we've, we've, we've built our, our nickel mines and our nickel refineries for a stainless steel product. We have the opportunity to build this specifically for these downstream chemical products for the lithium ion battery. Um, so we've got the two business units. We'll just start with the upstream business unit. The upstream is, is a mine. It's a mine in Vietnam. It's a previously operating mine. It was, it was uh, yeah, well, well operated. Um, it was closed and put into care and maintenance when the nickel price was $8,000 a tonne, so uh, less than half of today's prices. The previous owners sunk $136 million into that mine. We've also got a local partner as well, so a local... Vietnamese uh, partner owns 10% and that's a really important part of operating in Asia. We're looking to work closely with Trafigura as a feedstock partner into our downstream business and we're looking to um, future partnerships and, and, and investments into upstream um, nickel concentrate uh, operators. This is the, the uh, milestones for the upstream business so we're aggressively drilling out our 25 different targets um, systematically working through with the modern geophysics. Um, we have a number of these massive sulphide targets and we'll talk more about them. Moving that into a PFS, um, then definitive feasibility study next year, restart the existing concentrator and then feed that into our downstream business. So we've got this district scale opportunity. For some reason the previous owners didn't test um, the 25 targets. Um, they're all outcropping mineralisation. Um, we we use the EM, we make sure we hit with almost every hole hits, um, hits nickel. Um, it's, a, it's a great te technology and it's come a long way, particularly um, since this mine was last operated. Uh, we went, instead of just focusing on massive sulphides, we went and drilled out the biggest ore body we could see um, because we needed to show our Korean partners that we had the security of supply over a longer term. Um, we've gone and drilled out a large disseminated ore body. It's around 200, 200 to 300,000 tonnes of nickel there. So that's a big, um, large open pit mine that will, um, I suppose, shows, shows our Korean partners that there's some nickel in the ground and, and that really obviously kicks off the negotiation and the, the old revenge of the miner kicks in. So it's, um, it's all about nickel in the ground and that's why we have, have these strong relationships with the battery end users. So we quickly went and put that through a scoping study. We pushed it into those downstream products, so the NCM811. So there's capex associated with the downstream. There's a capex number associated with the upstream. It's around $315 million on this scoping study, and the MPV is two times that. So two, two times MPV to capex ratio, um, strong IRRs. So this is an eight-and-a-half-year mine life just on that first ore body. And now we're going to drill out all the smaller, high-grade ore bodies. These are more suited to the existing infrastructure. This allows us to remove a significant amount of that initial capex. So that initial $150 million for a bigger concentrator, we can put that into uh, later in the mine life when we have cash flow. This, these ore bodies will go straight through the existing concentrator 
and require no or minimal capex at the upstream uh, mine level. And uh, they continued to deliver. This is the king snake ore bodies full of platinum, palladium, gold, rhodium, uh, copper. So it's good to have these byproduct credits. Um, very similar to the Norilsk district in um, Russia, they, these byproduct credits pay for a lot of the operating costs. So, so you, yeah, you, your palladium, uh, all-time highs, rhodium, these metals are very um, lucrative and, and really help with the economics. So at the upstream level, we're going to um, drill out those 25 ore bodies. We're going to push them through the existing concentrator. We'll build a second concentrator for the bigger ore bodies that are lower grade. So we'll end up with two concentrators. One, the existing concentrator for massive sulphide. The uh, second, larger concentrator for disseminated ore bodies. Uh, pushing it through into that NCM811, which is that black powder there on the, on the right of screen. Um, so we're well positioned. We have two of the largest hydro dams in Southeast Asia, and that's what's driving a green product and very low carbon and maybe even a zero carbon or net zero carbon will be our goal. Existing concentrator allows us to reduce the upfront capex. The Haiphong port is where Binfast and LG are building a $2 billion lithium ion battery plant. So well positioned in northern Vietnam with our partners and the existing infrastructure. We'll just now move to the downstream business. This is the bit that really gets me excited. It's the, it's the chemistry set. Um, and we've got our, our hydrometallist, Tony Tang, is at the, at the um, booth. So come and meet Tony. This is his passion. This is uh, such an exciting opportunity um, to really push into these downstream products. The PFS is coming out in June, July. That will show the initial numbers for the downstream business. Then we're moving into a pilot plant. I've promised Tony that we'll be able to fund his pilot plan in Vietnam and, and it'll be an amazing feat because we'll be able to bring the, the partners from all around the world. They'll be able to see our NCM 811 in Vietnam. Then we'll move towards offtakes, joint ventures, final investment decision in the next 12 to 18 months, start building and then producing the NCM product in 2024. And the, this is the chemistry set. It's actually, um, all, all of this is tried and tested technology that's used all through the mining industry as we speak today. So the pressure oxidation process is a process that's, that's used um, all through the mining industry, particularly in refractory gold. Um, you can see solvent extraction as well. That's another technology that's well proven and, and tried and tested. The other interesting part about this flow sheet that we have an intermediate product, which is MHP. That's a really important part of, of this, this emerging, I suppose, lithium ion battery industry. The payabilities on that are, are increasing by the day. So that's a, a key um, intermediate product for everyone to keep an eye on. I think the payabilities on MHP have gone up to 90%. So that just shows the demand that's coming for these downstream products. So we're going to upscale this refining business. We're going to bring in third-party feed. We will work with third-party providers. Up to 50% of the feed will come from our mining district, 50% from third-party providers. Each of those trains or those little factories there can do 20,000 tonnes per annum of nickel. If we can do four of them, we're the same size as Nickel West. So this, this scale of opportunity puts us in the top five of Class 1 nickel producers. Obviously, that building that's nowhere near as difficult as finding the feed and that's why um, we're, we're, lo we're, we're looking to, to partner with other nickel miners who have a concentrator and they're not locked into offtake. Come to the booth and we'll, uh, we'll have a chat. So just in summary, well positioned um, in this region. You can see we've got two of the largest hydro dams. That's driving the low operating costs the green credentials and the, and the, the green uh, nickel product. We've actually trademarked green nickel, so no one else out there can have that. We are the green nickel um, producers of the future um, and well positioned with our, our, our partners, not only in, in Vietnam, but in South Korea. And um, thank you for your time.